My name is Mike Kerr, and I am the co-founder of Hear the Watchmen, and we are here today with a tribute from the Watchmen to Russ Dizdar, who passed and went to heaven on October 18th, 2021. You know, Russ was such, a, such an amazing warrior for Jesus. The mere stature of the man, he stood tall. And when he came into a room, he beamed with the Holy Spirit. He loved Jesus, and it just showed, it exuded from him. You know, he spoke at all of our Hear the Watchman conferences up until a couple of years ago, and he was truly a dedicated, dedicated servant of the Lord. I got to tell you one little story about Russ. We were at one of our conferences in Dallas, and Russ was the last speaker in the evening. After he was completed with his session, we had a room available for him so he could go over and pray with people and do deliverance. When I left the main room and walked out, there was a line all the way down the hallway waiting to get in to see him. Jeannie and I, my wife, the co-founder of Hear the Watchman, we went up to our room to go to bed, and that evening I couldn't sleep. So I went back down at 2.30 in the morning, and I found Russ still in the prayer room, praying and doing deliverance with people. I waited around, and when they left, I went to Russ, and I said, brother, you have to go to bed. Russ looked at me and he said, brother, I've still got two more people to touch. So I waited around and when they were done, I walked upstairs, I walked up to the lobby with Russ, put him in the elevator and sent him off to get some room, some rest in his room. So that's the kind of man Russ Dizdar was. He will be greatly missed. Sit back, please take the time to go through this memorial. Will you'll see the watchman say a final goodbye to Russ Gizdar. Thank you so much. Thank you folks for uh, joining me tonight. I'm very, very heartbroken from the loss of my great friend, Pastor Russ Dizdar, truly a powerful man of God. And he went, he was the man that, uh, was not afraid of the darkness. Matter of fact, his book, Shatter the Darkness, and The Black Awakening, those two books are some of the most profound written dialogue of how we as Christians have to and will encounter the dark side. Russ Dizdar and his wife, Shelley, are great friends uh, have and, and with us for many years, and I have preached in many conferences with Russ, and uh, I'm, I can't forget the night in Dallas, Texas, when he preached the entire book of Revelation, chapter after chapter, a summary of each chapter in 90 minutes. It was one of the greatest sermons I ever heard in my life. And his explanation and his dialogue, his ability to handle the vernacular uh, to explain things, whether it be in the Greek uh, or in Latin or in English and other uh, dialects. I mean, he's just a tremendous man of courage a man of integrity, a man who truly loved God. And he studied everywhere. Booty, I mean, he was, uh, uh, let's see, he was at Moody Institute. He served at four different pastorate of churches, including the one there in Akron, Ohio. Um, just so many places and things he did in conferences. But his real ability to touch people and to help those that were helpless and to deliver those that were demonically uh, oppressed and, affl and afflicted. I mean, and the caring nature that Russ had and demonstrated and his humbleness, the gentle giant, you still didn't want to mess with him. He helped the police in investigating of different occult crimes and murders. He went where no man really will go. Russ Dizdar is one of a kind, truly a legend that will be missed. Where do we turn now with those situations where we don't know how to handle? Who do we go to to give us the advice? 
we're praying for Shelly. She is still ill and is in the hospital, praying for their daughter and her husband and their grandchild and how that that family is going to miss Russ and there's no way to replace him. Not only with them, but his parishioners, his followers, and to all of us who enjoyed working and fellowshipping with Russ Dizdar. I can tell you I personally thanked, thanked him and L.A. Marzulli for coming to Baton Rouge, Louisiana in a, in a conference that I hosted down there, um, the three of us together. I enjoyed the conference that Russ Dizdar, myself, and the Hagmans did in Gurney, Illinois. I mean, I really did enjoy these television interviews I did with Russ Dizgar, Dis, Russ Dizdar. And uh, he is so, so greatly will be missed. But I'll meet him again. I will meet you, Russ, again in glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you. Thank you to Russ Dizdar and to his family. Hey everybody, David Hebener here. You know, I woke up this morning and it felt like I had the breath knocked out of me when I found out that one of our great warriors of, uh, of heaven, of the faith, went on to be with the Lord, Russ Dizdar. You know, of all the hundreds of videos that I've done, Russ sticks out in my mind, and I'll tell you why. It's not, it's not so much the subjects we cover, even though it was, but you know, some people I interview are well, they're the same uh, after I turn the camera off as they were on camera. Some are less than when I turn the camera off. But Russ Dizdar was more. And what do I mean by that? He was more than just someone that would do an interview and had knowledge of demonic warfare and, you know, uh, you know, like sleep paralysis and astral projection. No, he was a real uh, man of God when it came to the things of God, which he was a pastor. He was a pastor at heart, a preacher at heart. And I'm gonna give you a, a little um, story that, uh, about Russ, that we were speaking at a conference and we were on stage and all of a sudden there was a demon out in the audience and, and he astraled out onto the people on stage and we felt the wind, I did, and I looked over at Russ, he looked at me and he knew what happened. Well, I went to Russ and I said, look, I, I need to do this interview. I'm getting on a plane tomorrow morning. Can you meet me at 8.30 in the morning to do this interview? It's really important because what happened? He said, yeah, I'll do it. So 8.30 next morning, he comes walking in. He looked like a road map of Georgia on his face. And you know, I didn't think much about it. I had a late night. Well, come to find out that late night was him staying up all night praying for people. He got almost no sleep, but he promised he would do this um, video on astral projection, which is blessed. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people. I wanted to share that with you because that's only a true warrior of God that does things like that. All right, listen, I love you guys. I appreciate you and keep up the good fight because you too are a warrior. Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here. Well, I wanted to come on and just pay a final tribute to Russ Dizdar, who is one of the most powerful men of God that I have ever, ever met. And I want to say for all of you grieving out there for his friends, his family members, his loved ones, all the people that listened and read what he wrote and are and were inspired uh, by something he said, I want to say that my prayers and hearts go out to you. And, and, and my deepest concern, my deepest love and adoration is there for all of you guys. But here's what I will also tell you is I know that right now that man of God is sitting next to Jesus Christ up there. He's got his brand new body, a younger, more powerful body, and he is happier than ever right there in heaven. And he is, he is, I guarantee you, he's in a really good place. And that's what I want to just kind of leave, you know, at the feet of Jesus, if you will, because what we do know is even though Russ Dizdar may not be with us anymore, we know he's dancing in heaven. And not only that, but Russ Dizdar in name, through his writings, through his inspiration, and through what he has done, will live on through our words, through his books. And he is going to continue to inspire people here on earth, and he will have such a great reward in heaven. And I can only hope that I follow in a footstep uh, like him that was that was a person that was such a 
model, if you will, uh, someone who wanted to be and someone who was really like Jesus, someone whose words when they spoke could cast demons out and do such powerful deliverances. Now that is a man of God. But I just wanted to say I, I'm happy to, to to give this tribute to Russ Dizdar. I am not only inspired by Russ Dizdar, but I'm inspired uh, by everything he's done to inspire all of you. And I love you all. And um, one day we're going to see him again when we all get to heaven. I love you all. And again, I'm praying for all the fan, f friends, family members, and those who he has inspired. Friends, Pastor Mike Spaulding here with a word of exhortation, encouragement, Shelley and family, Russ's team of dedicated brothers and sisters. I want to share just a few thoughts. Russ was a dear brother and friend to me. Always the encourager. Always the one who looked on the bright side. Always the one willing to help and a hand. Russ was one of a kind to me personally, and I, I'm so thankful that I was able to share that with him personally. What an encourager he was. He's going to be missed. There's no question about that. Big shoes to fill. Russ's heart, his love for Jesus, just as big as he was. Many of you know that personally. To Shelley and the family, Russ's close team members, I leave you with this word from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you. And give you peace. God bless you. Shelly, our prayers are with you constantly for what the Lord would have for you and your team next. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in the Lord. This is Mark Runyon. I'm here today to give tribute to Russ Dizdar and to uh, profess how he impacted my life through his ministry and through his uh, very strong impression of being a follower of Jesus Christ. I came to know Russ two years ago in fact, October 2nd, when he put out his uh, one of his conferences, um, the International Conference on SRA, I purchased that on Vimeo and watched that and was used mightily of the Lord to help me understand a lot about myself and my life. And as I watched the conference and uh, took in the speakers, and took in what they were explaining about uh, satanic ritual abuse and DID, I began to realize a lot of puzzle pieces that the Lord was highlighting over my 30 plus years of uh, being one with him and uh, was very impacted and touched. I had listened to some of his videos, either through Steve Quayle or Doug Hagman or you know, the Watchman, but never had really spent much time with understanding how deep he was exposing satanic ritual abuse and DID. So I... Um, <clears throat> really began to tear apart his website and learn as much as I could from what was there after having watched the conference. And I watched the whole conference hours without stopping uh, two years ago. Was heavily impacted, began to look significantly at his book to understand the whole thing of the Black Awakening and the Super Soldier Program. And I knew there was a lot in my life that I needed to uncover. And this was the beginning of that uh, to a degree it never had been done before. I knew I was an SRA victim. Uh, I knew uh, there was multiple personalities, didn't know how to put all this together from the different uh, deliverances and other things that I had experienced over uh, the 30 plus years that I had been a Christian. So here I am at, uh, at that time, 61 years old, trying to still put everything together. And now 63, I have such a 
greater understanding because of the work that uh, our brother Russ did and all the information that was available on his website, his book, his other teachings, everything from Revelation, the book of Acts, uh, listening to him uh, on Shadow of the Darkness uh, radio, joining the 10 million fierce, looking into uh, applying for the SIIU. Many things were happening. Um, and there was something about this man and the way he presented himself and being very close in age to each other and growing up in similar things, both being very much warriors for God. Thus, I wear my BDU shirt today from my 20 years in the Air Force, retired first sergeant. And um, both Russ and I had a love for the Iron Horse, uh, specifically Harleys. I, I saw Russ as a, not only a, and, and came up through most of my early learning through the assemblies of god so I had a lot in common with russ and i just felt there was something i can gain as i listened more and more to what he had to to share and when he started talking about laven's born and all the different things that were going on over in germany and the things he experienced like kino and everything else it began to bring uh, awareness to me and what i had been exposed to in my life all the way up to the levels of uh, i have found out uh, through russ as well as doug riggs um, my life was influenced by Mengele, uh, Hitler, and Prince Philip. So I am very moved that my Lord has decided to bring home this brother. And the very first thing when I found out of his uh, going home, the Lord put on my heart about him was Philippians 1, 19 through 21. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the, sub, the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectations and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, it's always so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And I think of how much that applies to Russ's life and how we're going to miss this brother and all that he's done on behalf of SRA victims around the world, DID. Um, he finished his race. And that takes me to the section of scripture that the Lord laid on my heart for him. And um, I can't think of anybody in all my years that this applies to more than Paul himself in Second Timothy 4, 6 through 8. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time for my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but to also to all who have loved his appearing. And I think of all the people that he has impacted and has been used of the Lord to lead to Christ and how many of them will have that same crown, if not now, later. And I know Russ will be one of the first to throw that crown at the foot of Jesus. Russ, thank you for all that you did to impact my life and take me to a place now of knowing and understanding of the super soldier program and all that's part of that the Gen 6 project, the things that happened at Lavensborn, and to get me to an awareness of uh, my life that I don't believe anyone else could have. You were the foundation of that. That's led me to where I'm at today, working with Doug Riggs and, and many others. And then bringing my beautiful wife, not knowing my wife was who I was just married January 20th of this year. She was at that conference. She actually went up and asked a question. So I was literally seeing my wife two years ago uh, on a conference and had no idea that one day that woman asking that question of Russ at the end of the conference was going to be my beautiful wife. So uh, thank you, Russ, for introducing me to Gina. Thank you, Russ, for all that you've done and the, and the impact you've had in her life. Uh, she has she she spent quite a bit of time uh, dialoguing with you as well, but we love you. 
We thank God that you're with our Redeemer right now. We ask for God's mercy upon your daughter and your wife and all extended family and everyone involved in the ministry. And I, I just pray right now that God's comfort would be upon all of them. And once again, salute you, thank you, and lift up the name of Jesus and his salvation, his, as you were speaking lately about Sozo, the fullness of salvation, the deliverance, the healing, and the salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. You were a general among generals. You, you led the way, a true warrior, a true Psalms 144, as David. And I, I, I humbly, humbly acknowledge and appreciate you. May God bless you, your family, and all that have been impacted by you in Yeshua's name. Thanks. This is Mark Runyon signing out. Bye-bye. So many of us within the body of Christ have been blindsided by the recent passing of Russ Dizdar, who, in my opinion, was a general in the faith, especially in the area of deliverance and deprogramming from satanic ritual abuse. How I discovered Russ was I had fled the marital home in 1999 with five children, thinking based on their self-report that they had been violated by my then husband and that that was it. Not that that was it, meaning it was something small. It wasn't, but that's what I knew at the time. And following a car accident where my neck was broke, a C1, and I had a bunch of other damage, and I was homebound, I began to fast and pray. And I discovered a book by Mary Lake called What Witches Don't Want Christians to Know. And as I read that book, everything she pointed out was indicative of my children having been potentially sexually ritually abused, which was a whole new paradigm for me. I contacted Mary Lake and we began to talk and she referred me to some people she thought might help me in my search for understanding in order to be able to better help my children. And so she led me to Russ Dizdar. Russ Dizdar at Shatter the Darkness, which was his website. And I always think of Habakkuk 2 to write the vision and make it plain so the one who reads it might run. His website was a, a plethora of information. And I began to study voraciously. And I also began to write letters to ministers about the situation with my children. And in particular, my daughter, who was the last one to be taken into the coven. She was literally kidnapped. And I wrote 51 ministers. I have the letters. I kept them in a file. And out of all those people and ministers, some of them did write me back brief little texts. You know, we'll pray for you. Your children need to be saved. They all were saved as children. The only person who really took time to take my issue seriously was Russ, Russ Dizdar. We Skyped, we talked back and forth um, on the phone. And many times, you know, he would say, I'm praying for you and continue to pray and stand. And as her mother, that is the most important thing that can be done. And he would apologize when he was so busy. And at one point he and his team decided they would go to, in, to the location where my children were being held to see if they could extricate, in particular, my daughter. The reason being, I had hired a private investigator who had multiple pictures of my daughter pregnant. To date, it's been six years since I've seen her. So there was pictures of her pregnant and um, the baby never was allowed to live. 
and Russ knew this, what was going on behind the scenes. And he and his team had planned to go, but they weren't telling me. They told me they didn't want me to know. Um, they would just show up and, and help see what they could do to, to intervene and do one of their freedom encounters. And unfortunately, Russ became lame. He was unable to move out of his bed. I believe it was for about a month. During that time, Mary Lake and I talked and she said, don't you find it odd that right when he was going to go help your daughter, he became lame? It hadn't even dawned on me. But he was so high level in the spiritual warfare that he was doing to help the victims. He was definitely targeted. Um, later, as I continued to grow in the things of God, purchased his books, his teachings began to grow stronger in prayer. I ended up, because of Russ, going into the church and having a ministry there of deliverance myself. And I also had a team of women who were involved in interceding and praying over people that were traumatized. And we actually attended his 2019 conference in Ohio. And it was a wonderful time, a wonderful experience, so much word going forth. And he had asked me if I would want to meet with him and his team Sunday after the last service, because I was law enforcement on my job. And he was interested in having me be part of the SIIU team. And unfortunately, because I was the driver and all the women that were with had work the following Monday, I couldn't stay late. And I think about, you know, sometimes I wish things would have, you know, gone a different way at that point in my life. I'm not regretting it. Everything works out for a reason. I ended up marrying a man and um, we believe the Lord is calling us into the deliverance ministry, uh, specifically for children like mine who are held under the mind control, satanic ritual abuse. So Russ, you know, a seed goes into the ground and dies, but it produces a bountiful harvest. And I thank you for all that you did in trying to help me and my children and trying to help so many. I can't even believe now when I look back at our texts and the communication we had that you even took the time to do that knowing how busy you were. And I thank God for you for helping me learn how to study and how to pray. You told me to, to stand firm and to pray and how proud you were of me when I showed up with a team of women at, at the conference and you encouraged me the whole way to keep going. And I know you're before the throne right now worshiping. I know that's what you love to do the most. And I can't wait till we all, the remnant body of Christ, are reunited again. And until then, we will take the baton. We will take that mandate to be boots on the ground and to go forth and to do the works of Christ upon the earth fearlessly to shatter the darkness. Our friend. Pastor Ross Distar has left this fallen world and he's gone on to glory. I was working on a recording last night when I got the news and Elie Mazzulli and I spoke and still kind of hard to process it all. Um, James 4, 14 tells us, you know, wherefore we know not which shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? There's even a vapor that appears for a little while and, and then vanishes away. Um, we're to occupy until the Lord Jesus Yeshua returns, which I think is going to be in our lifetime. The expression, keep calm and carry on, uh, comes to mind. I think it's one of the most recognizable slogans in all British history. That phrase to reinforce um, the idea during the Second World War of your, your mate, your, your friends, your family, your comrade uh, next to you is gone, suddenly we're supposed to carry on with the assignments. Um, I think that 
shows even in, in the greatest of the heavils, we remember um, who we are in Christ and continually show composure and it's, it's because composure is a choice we all get to make, uh, it's an act of our will um, to do those terrible thoughts and help steady our frazzled emotions. So when one of our friends and a warrior like Ross is taken out, we really need to be putting on the mind of Christ here, um, expand our understanding to this true scale of reality and find peace and calmness in the Lord our God. Uh, in fact, 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. So we're not going to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. I've got a lot of memories flooding back uh, since I got the news. Um, things that Russ and I did together, he just quite often would uh, have somebody come with a message, a little scrolled message, come at once, I need help. Um, doing deliverance and ministry somewhere in another room at conferences. And uh, we did a lot of that together over the years. And I was always amazed at Russ's stamina. After we would give a presentation and you know, hundreds of people would just queue up waiting to speak with him. They usually wanted individual prayer. Um, the rest of our speakers, you know, we'd all go off to dinner and I look back and there's Russ still standing there praying for people with, you know, hundred people waiting behind him. So he really had um, an amazing gift, an amazing anointing. Uh, Russ's testimony was so powerful. How he got saved during a moment when he was a young man and was about to commit suicide and the Lord revealed himself to him. He was so radically saved. He just wanted to see everyone come into salvation. He was one of the most caring people in the world and he's going to be um, very missed. Russ would, um, after Tommy, about his wife Shelley and the kids, the grand, his grandchild, um, just he was just so in love with them. And I just, my heart goes out to them and the rest of the loved ones and Russ's influence and spirit of influence, because um, we're all going to miss him terribly. He's a very faithful servant of the Lord. And um, we just, um, Gosh, it was just like so much ministry he did over the years together. It's just hard to contemplate it all now. Um, still kind of going through the grieving process of uh, losing a number of um, friends and loved ones recently. I've had to do a number of funerals. Um, in England, I was taught, keep a stiff up the lip. And I really believe that was wrong advice. And after all the studies I've done on epigenetics over the years and from a biblical perspective, so I'm not going to tell anybody not to cry, um, not to experience your emotions. Emotions are God-given, and we're made up of numerous chemicals, molecules of emotions. Uh, just like every thought takes a physical space in our brains and are alive, emotions are part of who we are. And back to Lord Jesus, you know, said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We will receive supernatural peace from the Lord, not the way the world thinks about peace, but it's a supernatural peace. Uh, I've taught it so many times. Um, your heart basically releases a chemical called A and F, which is like the um, it's molecules of healing and, and supernatural um, peace that comes over us. And your kidneys would release a chemical called DHEA. So, um, you know, these are like molecules of peace join the Holy Spirit. We think back that one of the shortest verses in the entire Bible is Jesus wept. And John 11. So um, it's okay right now. It, this is um, just a time we're all going through, walking by faith, not by sight, and uh, just believing we can continue to help comfort each other as we see the day approaching of Christ's return. And I think, too, you know, a measure of our life is not uh, in the duration, but rather in its donation. We think of Rust as donation. I mean, he contributed what he invested was amazing. Uh, he was one of the most courageous warriors for the kingdom of God I ever met. Um, I think about how he invested his love and devotion in his family and friends and congregations. And um, and these are the things I think we need to remember. Uh, the Lord tells us, teaches the number of days that we may apply our hearts on the wisdom. We don't know long any of us really out here. Um, and so 
I, I think Russ would just really be encouraging you if he could tell you right now for himself. Um, we used to talk about, I, I had a, a near death experience back in 2001, and we talked about that a, a lot. Um, when you leave here, you don't lose consciousness. And I really believe Russ is probably dancing on streets of gold as we speak right now. So um, it's for the rest of us here that we've got to still deal with being in this fallen world. Again, you know, the Lord Jesus said, he's the only way, the only truth and the life. Nobody's going to get into heaven without coming through him. So I think that would be the most important thing uh, we recognize right now. And Russ talked a lot about uh, occultism in, in his ministry, uh, trying to get people free. Um, I can just remember things about that. And what comes to mind is 1 Corinthians 2.9, that it's written, eyes not seen, nor ear heard, nor that entered in the heart um, and the things which God has prepared for them that love him. So I just pray all of you here, um, gathering in the here the Watchman family, will keep these things in mind and uh, continue to lift up um, Shelley, this daughter and, and, and her family in, in prayer right now. And we just thank you, Father God, in the almighty name of Jesus for doing great and mighty things. And we thank you that our brother Ross has graduated this earth and has gone to be with you for all eternity. And he's gonna be coming back on a flying white horse with you pretty soon. So um, we look forward to seeing him again, and being part of that. My name is Jamie Walden with Omega Dynamics. And, uh, and I just am really heavy hearted for the news that I heard about Russ, but at the same time, just filled with elation and joy to know and understand truly where he's at and the warrior's reward um, that he's receiving in heaven. And, and I just owe so much of even work, what I'm doing today and the burden and the zeal that I have for the body and, and, and to be willing to tear down strongholds and bind up the brokenhearted to so much of what I learned from Russ over the years. I mean, I remember sitting at the fire department as a firefighter paramedic and, and listening to uh, training after training and teaching after teaching from Russ and, and, and just being filled with the same passion that he had to, to see the captives set free, to truly be a freedom fighter of the most high. And, um, you know, to hear of his loss and to know that we've lost such an amazing uh, warrior saint here in the land of the living, here, here in the land of the living is, is um, burdensome. And we mourn with those who mourn and we rejoice with those who rejoice. But the legacy that I know that, he has imparted to the world around him is immeasurable. I can think of numerous ministries that have sprung up because of him. I can think of households that have been renewed and marriages that are restored and brokenhearted and wounded hearts and souls that have experienced the restoration in Christ Jesus. And whenever I think of Russ, the only thing I always think about is his love for, for just fire hosing the gospel with love. Like it, it you know, he, he has these attributes of an investigator and, and this guy that's really hitting the ground running in this warrior spirit to make war against the powers of darkness. And every time I think of my brother, as I think of him at these conferences that I've been blessed to be able to speak at a few few with, with him, is that the way he intentionally pursues to minister to each individual person's heart is um, it's humbling to say the least, and it's challenging and it's convicting, and it fills me with joy to see the impact what the authentic love for Christ Jesus and the power of the gospel can do in lives around him. And I know that Russ has left many loved ones behind. Um, I know that there's lots of mourning and deep, deep sadness that's, that um, is going to be experienced by so many people, so many people that he's impacted. And there is a whole left, but I also know that the Lord, when he raises up a man like Russ and his wife and her whole household, right? These are always family-based ministries. When he raises them up and, and by the Lord's timing and his sovereign will, he chooses to remove one of the heroes of the faith that he does have somebody that will, waiting in the wings, that he will bestow a double portion of because the Lord's name is what's at stake and he will be glorified. And if there's anybody I can think of that truly exemplified not tainting and stealing any glory for himself, but only ever giving it to the Lord God Almighty through his son, Christ Jesus. It was Rust Isdar. And I'm just so grateful to even 
get to know him. I'm grateful to be able even to, to have, have been in his company, to pray with him, to hear him pray over others. And, and um, I just bless his family in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless all those who he has ministered to over the years that are wounded right now and burdened and, and in mourning for him in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray a very specific blessing over all those who are yet to be set free, that the spirit that the Lord touched Russ with, with would be poured out double portion on a multitude to continue to advance the kingdom in this really late hour um, for the setting of captives free, for the glory of the Lord, and for our joy. So I just praise the Lord for my brother Russ, and he will be deeply, deeply missed. But at the same time, I'm overwhelmingly filled with joy to know and understand the presence of the King that he finally gets to know in full. And, um, and because of that, we don't mourn as those who have no hope. And the resurrection is truly what it's all centered on. And I know if Russ was here, he would say the same thing. Solidify your hearts in Christ Jesus. You have a hope, the hope of the resurrection because of the King who did not withhold anything from us, not even his very life. He would tell you the same thing now. He would say, smile and rejoice and press on for the glory of the King. So I just thank you so much for even being able to speak to my brother, Russ. And it is an honor and a blessing to have known him. Hey, good day, all of us who are mourning the loss of our dear friend, Russ Dizdar. My name is Sheila Glidden, and I hold the dubious distinction of clomping up some stairs on a platform in shoes that I knew were way too big for me as I filled in for Russ at the Orange County Conference a couple of years ago. Oh, we were all so disappointed not to be able to hear what was on Russ's heart and on his mind that year. I also had an opportunity to sit at his table at one of the Hear the Watchmen luncheons. And while we all ate, Russ fasted because he was about the work of his father all the time. A young woman grabbed the last seat at our table and shared with us the horror that she was living with with supernatural things taking place in our home. And when she found herself levitated to the ceiling, she got in a car and she drove all night to get to the conference determined to have Russ minister to her. And that's what he did. And I had the privilege of sitting in on that meeting with him and with this young lady. She had his undivided attention and the gentleness with which he addressed her situation it was just remarkable. He broke strongholds, he counseled her, he prayed over her, because that's what Russ does. He admonished us at that conference not to just keep going to one after another and never doing anything with what we learned. He encouraged us to put to practice in ministry. I think that if he could come back today and just share one of the things that was on his heart, he would ask us to keep Shelley and his family in prayer cover them with intercession and support. And if Jesus was with them, I think he would add to that, that he had an expectation of us continuing to support the ministry of Shatter the Darkness. With all the thousands of hours and millions of downloads that were done over the years of what Russ invested into his ministry, we had the privilege of meeting him and seeing him in person. But those who are coming after us need that training as well. And the only way that we can keep it going is for us to support it. I listened to his broadcast Monday, and he talked about infiltrators coming into ministries. They're little foxes that come into the vineyard and eat the fruit. All of you who are mourning this loss and trying to come to terms with this loss, don't let it be in vain. It's time for us to step up 
and move into the steps that, that Russ forged for us. I'm so grateful to hear the Watchmen for not only providing a platform for us to listen and see probably the most effective ministers on earth today, but to also get to meet them and to share with them and to fellowship with them. Keep them all in your prayers. They're all on the front line. They all need to be covered with our prayers. Let the devil regret the day that he touched and tangled with Rusty's dark. I pray for all of us to just be blessed by his memory and to continue the work of the ministry until our Lord and Savior returns. God bless you all. Ladies and gentlemen, we were not planning this impromptu video, uh, but it is with the deepest of regrets that if you have not heard that we as Skywatch inform you the passing of our dear brother, Russ Dizdar. We're going to take a few minutes to kind of memorialize some of the moments that we had with Russ and send our deepest condolences and thoughts and certainly prayers to the family that survived Russ. Um, I'm joined in the studio today by Derek Gilbert and also Drew Graffia. Uh, gentlemen, I'll start with you, Derek. I know that over the last several years you had the privilege, as did I, as did my father who thought the world of Russ, being at various conferences where he was speaking on the occult, evangelizing for the Lord in, in a way that only Russ could. Mm -hmm. Um, we just discussed a moment ago the void that he leaves behind. You know, who fills a Russ Dizdar's shoes? That's the, the thing. Um, we've seen a number of fellow warriors fall, fellow soldiers in, in this battle here very recently. Uh -huh. um, and uh, Sharon said something very wise the other day. She said, you know, we need to remember that this is not a sprint that we're involved in. It's a, it's a relay. And now we pray for someone to pick up Russ's baton. Um, when Sharon and I were first getting involved in, in writing, which was the process we thought would lead to a series of novels, and that's why we started our podcast, PID Radio, back in 2005, turned out the writing was to get us to start the podcast, which was what led <clears> us <throat> to people like Russ, yeah. and your family, your dad, Steve Quayle, L.A. Marzulli, and so on and so on, and led to the research that we're doing now. I, I first heard of Russ on another podcast, uh, coming out of Florida, this would be around 2004, I think, 2004, 2005. And I was fascinated because he was talking about direct encounters with demonic entities, what, w what Roman Catholics would call an exorcist. Yeah. Uh, Russ uh, was describing what it was like, and it's nothing like the movies. And I thought, now, a few years earlier, I would have thought this guy was just nuts and trying right. to get attention for himself, but he sounds really rational and really yeah. intelligent. Mm -hmm. And so I reached out to him and we interviewed him for PID Radio and then over the years interviewed him several more times for uh, my personal podcast, A View from the Bunker. Um, in fact, I was just going back through the archives uh, this morning after hearing of Russ's passing and yeah. found an interview that was conducted at the Future Congress in Branson 10 years ago, 10 years ago, 2011, which featured another fellow soldier who's just uh, just passed last Wednesday, Rob Skiba. Rob Skiba. Rob yeah. and Russ and another fellow, Jeff Patty, discussing the supernatural realm. And um, that those interviews, those discussions with people like Russ and Rob and your father <clears throat> and uh, L.A. And, and many others over the years, through the interview process, was the foundation of my education, which has led to where we are now. But Russ was... As you say, he was the same person when he wasn't in front of a crowd preaching. Um, he was a little more low-key when he wasn't preaching, but he was the same. They were genuine. Russ yeah. and Shelly, who we pray for, yeah. she's still fighting. Um, I was uh, had occasion to be in Canton, Ohio, while I was still working in outside sales in the steel business. I said, hey, Russ, we're going on a tour of the expanded metal factory in your town. Hey, want to get together for lunch? Yeah. And we did. And it was, it was wonderful. Um, Shelly, at a conference, one of the Hear the Watchmen conferences, 
a um, couple of years ago, knowing how much we, we loved our dachshund, Sam, Sharon and I, gave us a little stuffed dachshund, who then, because Sam was not allowed to travel with us to England and Scotland and, and Israel, Dizzy, mm. Dizzy the dachshund, went with us in Sam's place. And in fact, if viewers uh, watch Unraveling Revelation that we're producing now, uh, look carefully over my right shoulder in each episode because Dizzy sits right there and will be there every episode. You know, you talked about, you know, when you first met Russ thinking, you know, maybe, maybe the kind of content he's covering could be mishandled or something to that effect. Because you do, when you get into the paranormal, when you get into the occult, you know, you're talking about charged items and people being af able to afflict somebody else with viruses, various, you know, Wiccan spells. And y you're talking about some of the seedy stuff that happens around witchcraft. And where does, where does TV sensationalize it? And where does reality actually take place through a biblical worldview? And here's Russ, and he's got this book called The Black Awakening. And I, I was struck by something my father said the first time he ever had the privilege of co-delivering content at a conference. He walked away and he kind of said the same thing. He said, there was this guy named Russ Dizdar there. And I wasn't sure what I was going to make of his presentation until I watched it. He said, wow, that guy knows the Bible. He does. My dad does not sprinkle that out frivolously. He really is very careful who he connects himself to. And from that moment on, it was this decade that followed where Russ was involved in several of our documentary movies and mm -hmm. was just a part of the great delusion on the, you know, the coming UFO disclosure and so forth. Right. But my dad was always very careful, still is very careful who he allows to come to Skywatch or to be a part of our publishing house or whatnot. And he, he always thought that, that Russ was, was one of the smartest experts in the field of the occult and so forth. Absolutely. And I will tell you, you know those people that come in a room, they're just great listeners. And it's something you can't really define in words, but it's the way that they maintain eye contact and that gentle demeanor by which they nod with you. And they really, you know, they put you at ease with their presence. Russ was just one of those guys that didn't require any labor to visit with socially. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to explain, but especially if you're someone like me who is a bit of a social introvert, despite you know how I may come off on TV or whatnot. Um, he was always refreshing. He was always refreshing to visit with, the way that he carried himself. Um, he was non-assuming, just a gentle spirit. He would never presume to tell you anything unless you asked and solicited, Russ, what do you think of this or that? And then you'd get this gracious, very well-researched, very balanced answer. So when you say, you know, who fills the shoes of a Russ Dizdar, the answer is those that move into those genres have big shoes to attempt to fill. And I'm sure that God is raising people now to carry that mantle, but there, there's no filling a rust is our shoes. Sure. I want to shift over to you, Drew, because I know that you've said repeatedly, I've known Drew for a few years now, you've told me repeatedly that there were some guys very integral when you first started coming into the faith and really this Jesus person becoming more than just a big fictitious story that somebody else told in church years ago, but really started to build for you a worldview around biblical teaching that was both fascinating, engaging, and really lured you in and kept your attention. And you've told me that one of those very key people was Russ Dizdar. Yes. When I first, you know, be, even became aware of Christianity and anything like that, when I became saved, Russ's podcast was actually what helped me to understand my authority in Christ and to be able to stop the demonic attacks that were happening to me at night. Cause I was having stuff visit me at night, mess with me at night. And then I would listen to his podcast and it, Anybody who's heard his podcast, he's, his, his love comes through the podcast. Yeah. He's talking about people who he knows are listening to his podcast that want to do him harm or bring him down, and he's praying for them directly to them through his podcast. So I remember listening to that, understanding what he was saying, learning about the demonic realm and where we stand in Christ and being able to stop those things from happening to me. So that, that was in maybe 2010. So this is when you were younger, and you say yeah. things were messing with you. What do you mean? Like... Things were visiting me in the night, holding me down, 
saying stuff in my ear when I was sleeping. And you didn't understand any of this. I had no idea what it was or, or why why it was happening, how to stop it. I didn't you're know not, there was a way to stop it. You're not living for the Lord at this time, though. And you look back and you believe maybe some of this was potentially demonic oppression or entities. Yes, perhaps. I had just made a decision to walk with the Lord, and that's when it all started. So I had a, a framework that it was evil, but I had no idea how to stop it. And it, uh, most, uh, I don't want to say most, but it seems like most people in the church don't address the demonic realm or, or they just write it off. So where do you go for help? And luckily I had his Shadow of the Darkness podcast to get me through that. And I listened to him for years. And actually when I met my wife, Bree, in 2017, we listened to the podcast together. It's one of the first things we did. And then uh, flash forward to when I moved to Missouri, I actually, I, I actually got invited to a conference with him and he was there and I, I got to speak with him. And when you met this man, you f could feel the presence of Jesus. You could feel him there. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. That's kind of what I was describing. I guess. You yeah. Know, we're saying it in different ways, but he just he absolutely carried that spirit with him. He was what everything I would think a Christian would be uh -huh. is what I saw in Russ. Where it's you could tell there's Jesus there. You could tell that you're not just talking to a man, even though he's just a man. But you, you could tell the Holy Spirit is with this man in such a way yeah. that. Others would, in between each session, others would come around him and sit, literally sit at his feet yep. as if he were an apostle, yep. just to hear what he would say about Jesus. Mm -hmm. he, he dealt with child sex trafficking, predators, demonic stuff, uh, not just demonic stuff, but demonic rituals, demonic ritual abuse, all that stuff. But the one thing that you could tell with him was that he had the joy of the Lord. That's right. And you, it, it, it seems so counterintuitive. How could he be dealing with such darkness? but have such a grasp on the joy of the Lord, but he did. And the, the, one of the fondest memories I have of him is when we're driving home in, the, in an Uber from the conference to the, to the airport. You and your wife. Me, my wife, and, and Russ. And we were just talking about things, casually talking, and then he, he talks to the lady up front. He's like, hey, do you know the Lord? And she's like, oh, yeah, I, I have a little experience with, with God. And he just starts evangelizing her right there. He brings her into the talk. He doesn't dumb down his talk about the demonic realm that he was having with us. He invites her in. He evangelized her on the spot. He, he ended up blessing her greatly. That's amazing, man. And it's just, this man was a Christian. And those shoes may not be filled, but there are some good ones to seek after. Well, and he leaves, you know, his writing and his research and a massive, massive titanous legacy behind. We don't understand with so much work yet to be done you know, why this hour, you know, the Lord would call one of his own home. But for the friends and family, just know that we loved Russ. We love Shelly, and uh, we're continuing to pray for her as she, uh, she is still uh, not out of the woods. Um, but the family, the daughters, mm -hmm. um, and well, all who, who loved Russ, who, who were blessed by his, uh, his ministry, his research, his teachings. Yeah. And that includes all of us here at uh, Skywatch TV. So from all of us here at Skywatch Television, Russ, we thank you for your work, your tireless commitment to the kingdom of God, the millions of hours you poured into the lives of people you didn't even know, and for showing all of us what it really looks like to be a true evangelist for the Most High. That's it.